Following reboots such as Ghostbusters, I often find myself wondering, what treasured part of my childhood will the progressives fuck up next? And the internet brought me the answer, in the same way a cat will bring a dead bird into the house and chew his face off while maintaining direct eye contact with you. I refer, of course, to Bert and Ernie, and how grown-ass adults are losing their shit over an ex-writer saying he always thought of them as a couple, as told in this video by Inform Overload. Well guys, it seems that your suspicions were right because the former writer of Sesame Street has just confirmed that Bert and Ernie are a gay couple. First off, it's a former writer, not the. And secondly, no he didn't. If your lazy ass took the time to read the article instead of Twitter, you'd find he said he felt they were. Because you bring what you know to your work, and Mark Saltzman is a gayer. So that makes sense, but it doesn't mean Bert and Ernie are gayers too. And honestly, it all makes sense now. I can just see the memes. So many memes. Well, I think you should see a doctor instead. Welcome back to Inform Overload, where we tell you about everything cool and awesome and controversial on the internet. No one cares. Moving on. <laughs> Sesame Street is an iconic children's show that an entire generation of people grew up loving, and it's still on the air today. Yes, so prime time to stick a social agenda in there, right? Never mind your ABCs, kids. Today we're gonna learn if Ernie is a top or a bottom. Sesame Street first aired back in 1969, huh? and Bert and Ernie's dynamic quickly became a favorite part of the show. Bert and Ernie are roommates who sleep in separate beds at 123 Sesame Street. Well, it makes sense with the cost of rent in New York. You'll need a housemate, you know? And don't give out their dress on the internet, they're gonna get death threats now. They would bicker in a way that a married couple would, and people loved it. Their relationship seemed mostly innocent, like best friends or frenemies. Oh, I actually feel dumber for hearing that word. But there was always this bit of suspicion around their relationship and whether or not there was a little bit more to the story. Yeah, but in the same way everyone wondered if Fred and Daphne were getting jiggy, and whether Zordon made the Asian girl the Yellow Ranger on purpose, and just how the hell a woman could give birth to a cow and a chicken. There were always rumors among fans of the show that Bert and Ernie could be a gay couple. In fact, Bert and Ernie had become gay icons in the queer community. What? But they're Puppets! What is wrong with these people? That's like having Gandalf as a role model. And on top of that, they're not even homosexual, according to the head of the children's television workshop in 1994, which was a long time before Saltzman decided to poke the big gay bear. Name a more iconic duo. I'll wait. Batman and Robin, and they are definitely doing it. Well, a former writer for Sesame Street, Mark Saltzman, has just revealed that the rumors are true. No, again, he spoke of how he felt about them. If you want confirmation of anything, look to one of the creators, Frank Oz, who said, It seems Mr. Mark Saltzman was asked if Bert and Ernie are gay. It's fine that he feels they are. They're not, of course. But why that question? Does it really matter? Why the need to define people as only gay? There's much more to a human being than just straightness or gayness. Well said, Frank. Of course, now he's getting heat for that to the tune of 2,400 replies. Because he only created the characters, what does he know? In an interview with Queer T, Saltzman said that when he was brought on board in 1984, he always wrote Bert and Ernie as if they were lovers. He said he didn't have any other way to contextualize them. He couldn't contextualize them as friends? Did he not have any mates growing up? All the other kids were like, oh no, here comes Mark, he makes everything gay. Saltzman also said that Bert and Ernie's relationship was based on his real life relationship with film editor Arnold Glassman. Yes, in that one had an OCD about paper clips and shit, while the other was a jokester, not that they sucked each other's dicks. After same-sex marriage was legalized in New York, fans of Sesame Street even started a petition to request a wedding episode between Bert and Ernie. Wow! Where are these people finding the time to do all this? Don't they have jobs? Or are they gay full-time or something? I mean, if Bert and Ernie aren't gay, then this is a bit of an arranged marriage, isn't it? Plus, they don't have sex. So it sounds like they're already married to me. But it seems that the people behind Sesame Street are not exactly down to jump on board with the gay couple narrative. Funny that, considering it's a show for educating children on basic maths and grammar with brightly coloured zany characters and not for teaching them about sexuality of any kind. Otherwise you're raising questions such as, why are they all getting fisted by grown men? And then you have to explain the no homo rule, it just gets complicated. In fact, some have called their response to the announcement, 
homophobic. Oh yeah, everything's homophobic now though, isn't it? It used to mean hating on the gays, but now the word has been diluted so much that anything short of covering yourself in glitter and notching off a bloke under a rainbow is considered homophobic. Even when Sesame Street said their characters don't have a sexuality, people said it was homophobic. Look at this one. Super homophobic and unnecessarily cruel. Cruel? To who? They didn't say, ugh, no, disgusting, they're straight, motherfucker. They said they don't have a sexuality because they're fucking puppets. And this is from the actual show, not some guy who came along to write for two characters created 15 years before he took the fucking job. In response to the petition, Sesame Street released a statement about Bert and Ernie where they said they were best friends who were created to teach preschoolers that people can be good friends with those who are very different from themselves. Oh, the bastards! How dare they not teach kids that puppets have sex. We should have an episode where they push the beds together and go to brown town. That's the real education, right? That's the stuff kids need to know. Forget your arithmetic and your words. Kids need to see Ernie taking pre-exposure prophylaxis and Bert riding him up the damn wall. And in response to the announcement, the Sesame Workshop also said on Twitter, even though they are identified as male characters and possess many human traits and characteristics, they remain puppets and do not have a sexual orientation. Ah. And everyone went re to what was essentially information we already knew and shouldn't have to be explained to anyone old enough to buy a can of monster energy drink. I'm sorry, what? That sounds like a cop out to me. What about Miss Piggy and Kermit? Miss Piggy is from The Muppet Show, not Sesame Street, and likely an icon for the fat acceptance movement. Plus, I never understood that coupling, you know? Kermit could do way better. They clearly have a sexual orientation. Kermit and Piggy are clearly heterosexual. I'm triggered. Like, I'm so triggered right now. Whee! Yes, I know Miss Piggy is part of the Muppets, but it backs up the puppet argument. No, it doesn't. Fucking puppet argument. They don't exist from the waist down. How are they gonna bone? Are you telling me Jim Henson has a closet full of furry pig vaginas somewhere? And the Muppet show was more about family viewing, as opposed to the educational aspect of Sesame Street, which today is brought to you by the letters L, G, B, and T. Sesame Street says that puppets can't have a sexual orientation, but clearly puppets can have a sexual orientation, and there have been several puppets on Sesame Street with a sexual orientation. And honestly, I'm just... <sighs> Calm down, whiny McTriggered, and name me a Sesame Street character with a sexual orientation. Tell me of one time when Big Bird saw a hot piece of ass and said, I'd like to tickle that Elmo. And don't give me that Muppet shit again because Gonzo clearly has a chicken fetish and I'd rather not get into it. Hell, I made my Barbies have a sexual orientation and they loved it. At least I think they loved it. They didn't really have a choice. Not important. Wait, what? You forced your Barbie dolls to have a sexual orientation. So, rape? You monster! There are plenty of children's shows and movies that are getting with the times. Disney's rumored to be making Elsa and Frozen 2 a lesbian. Makes sense to me, considering that film was fucking gay. They also showcased their first openly gay character, LeFou, with live action Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, why did they do that again? Was it shoehorning diversity? I think it was shoehorning diversity. Yeah, Disney got backlash from parents who didn't want their kids to see a gay couple in a children's film. Ooh, gay people are so scary. Well, the Spartans enjoyed a bit of buggery and they were fucking terrifying. But it, like, it was before they even saw the movie. LeFou's crush on Gaston was honestly, it was like, it wasn't even a big deal. It was like, it was more funny than anything else. Definitely not offensive. Offensive? No. But having a gay guy in a musical is definitely bordering on stereotypical. It was like a cute little, like, little crush. And it's not like Bert and Ernie are gonna appear on Sesame Street, you know, like in a bed together doing the nasty. It's still a children's show. True, but I bet the children's television workshop are gonna avoid teaching about the letters B and J in the same episode now. Maybe I spoke too soon, I don't know. <laughs> so most of social media has been pretty supportive of the announcement about Bert and Ernie being a gay couple. Yeah, they jumped right on that one, didn't they? My representation. Even though Mark Saltzman said he was misunderstood in the interview, so sorry guys. Maybe it'll happen in another kid's show once you stop pissing on about Steven Universe. Obviously, there are some people against it. Even the creators of the show are against the idea of Bert and Ernie being gay, but I mean, like, what can you do? The creators of the show aren't against it. They've simply made it clear that it's not the case, but no, no, homophobic. Some people just aren't ready to accept homosexuality and you can't force it upon them. That's right. I mean, they're not your Barbie dolls. But creating characters that are representative of real people in society is very important. Oh yeah, because we all know someone whose head is the shape and color of a fucking lemon, don't we? Children from a young age need to know that there are many types of people, gay, straight, black, white, and it's like, totally normal to be different. But if it were normal to be different, it wouldn't be different.
different, would it? Normal means a statistical frequency. As homosexuality is statistically infrequent, it's actually abnormal. Nothing against the gays, that's just what the word means. And yes, that too is homophobic. The importance of understanding equality and acceptance is something that should be taught at a young age. Then again, there's also the argument where is it up to a children's show to teach kids these things or is it up to their parents to teach them at home? You can't teach acceptance. If you don't like something, you don't like it. You can brainwash, sure, but that's not what you mean, is it? Is it? What I do find interesting, just a little, little tidbit here about all of this, is that recently Sesame Street debuted its first autistic character, Julia. Autistic and ginger, eh? Looks like she has all the disabilities. To teach kids about autism and why it's okay to be different. It's important for the creators of Sesame Street to talk about autism, obviously, because it's important. <laughs> Julia's spurging out right now. I love it. Good on you, Sesame Street. But not as important as sexual orientation? Hmm. Seems a little hypocritical to me, but hey, that's just uh, my opinion. And apparently, your opinion is that homosexuality is on par with mental illness. Glad you cleared that one up. So there you go, guys. Inform Overload have informed us of just how uninformed they really are, while simultaneously outing their host as a toy rapist. I do worry for Sesame Street, though. I mean, nothing good is going to come of this. Some parents are going to stop their children from watching it because they've been told Bert and Ernie are a couple. And some parents will stop their children from watching it because they think the show's homophobic. Either way, viewership is likely to drop and the kids will suffer because of it, proving once again that the progressives are really just destructive. Thanks for watching, guys. Please consider becoming a patron to fund my quest for Jim Henson's vagina closet. And check me out on BitChute because it's less of a bitch than YouTube. The links are in the description and remember, if Bert and Ernie were gay, they'd be made out of the finest fabric money can buy.